Welcome to another Payment Gateway integration video. This time, I'm gonna show you how to implement Apple Pay for Web using CyberSource Payment Gateway. As always, I have a demo for you of the final product. Here on the right side, I have a dummy payment page that I just embedded the Apple Pay button into it. And uh, let's go ahead and try payment. You click Pay, and then it's gonna prompt the Apple Pay uh, prompt on my on my Safari browser. On phone, it's gonna ask you for your uh, face ID instead. But on laptop with a touch ID support, it's gonna ask you to confirm with your fingerprint. So I confirm the payment. It's gonna create an Apple Pay token just like in the iOS video. And I'm logging that token on the on my browser console. It's gone now, but you saw it. And then what, what happens is that my client side sends that token to the same CyberSource payment API that I used in the iOS video. And the CyberSource performs the payment using the Apple Pay token and the return response to the client side. Client side reads that. And then when it reads that, then that Apple Pay prompt is gonna say payment successful. And then it's gonna get dismissed. And then I handle, and then I handle the payment result by redirecting to the result page like you can see here right now. Here is that payment flow that I just described. So this is my browser, my server, which uses the, uh, the payment API for CyberSource Gateway. It sends it to CyberSource. CyberSource decrypt the Apple Pay token to get the uh, device number, which then is sent to the card network. Card network approves the transaction with the card issuer. Then that gets returned to CyberSource, then the server, then the app. Pretty simple. So now let me show you how to implement it. Here's an empty page that doesn't have the Apple Pay button on it. I'm gonna go ahead in my React project and create a new JavaScript component. I'm gonna call it Apple Pay button. I'm only gonna need this stuff here. Let me zoom in so you can see. Then this is what the Apple Pay button component will look like. Let me go through it a piece by piece so I can show you what's going on. This function takes in the following as arguments, the amount, the currency, the country code, the label of the button that says buy with Apple Pay, but that's not gonna matter. It's just gonna show the Apple logo and pay like you saw earlier. Uh, merchant capability, this has always this always has to be supports 3DS for e-commerce. And then the card networks, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. And if you have a local card brand, like in Egypt, they have Misa. In Saudi Arabia, they have Mada. You can include that here as well. Here, I have a state variable that determines whether the Apple Pay button is going to be shown or not, depending on whether this browser supports Apple Pay. For example, if this is Chrome, the Apple Pay button will not show up. Here, I have a condition that uses that state variable. If available is false, then I'm not gonna show the Apple Pay button. If it is, then I'm gonna show this button component over here. This is my Apple Pay button style. This is that label that I get passed as an argument. And here in this method, start Apple Pay is where the action happened. But first I will detect if Apple Pay is available for this browser using this method, use effect. Use effect does something as soon as the component appears. So as soon as this component is mounted in the browser, this gets called. And inside this, first I in this line, I check if the component is rendered. If not, then I'm gonna return. I'm gonna hit return. Here I initialize Apple Play session. And then here I use this call to check if this browser can um, can use Apple Pay. And if it is, then I use this set available and I set the state to true if it can support Apple Pay, and that will cause this button to show up. Then when the user clicks on start Apple Pay, this method is gonna get called. It's a callback method. Here, I'm gonna create an Apple Pay session, and I'm gonna check again if this browser can make Apple Pay payments. I'm gonna set my payment request using the country code, currency code, which is all set as an argument here above, and the store name, we can just say script copy here, which is the channel name and the amount, okay? You create the session. And then the first APR call that you gotta make is an APR call to validate if this merchant is verified by Apple. This comes out of a this comes out of this session instance. You use this method on validate merchant, and then this is gonna return event. Event is gonna have two things inside it. The validation URL. This is a server call that you this is the URL for a server call that you're gonna make to Apple to validate that this merchant is valid. And then Origin. Origin is just the URL that is hosting this page right now. So you send them the URL where Apple Pay is getting called from, and then they're going to respond with some data if this domain has been verified by Apple for Apple Pay web payments. And then that will be the first step. This is going to be the first API that we're going to create, the Validate Merchant API. 
I'm gonna go ahead and implement it here. This is where I'm hosting all my server endpoints. I'm using Firebase functions to host my endpoints in the cloud. You can use something else like Microsoft Azure or AWS or whatever. Okay, and here's how that API is implemented. The first API is validate Martian. First, let's wrap everything in a try catch statement. Let's make sure the error is handled correctly like this. Now you wanna set your merchant ID and your store display name. This is just a channel name. Here is my store name and the merchant identifier. You need to create that from the Apple developer portal. For that, you need to log into Apple developer portal. You need to go to the certificates, identifiers, and profiles page. On the left side, click on identifiers. And here you gotta click on the plus next to identifiers. Click on that. And then here, make sure you have merchant IDs selected. Then continue, then give it a name. And this identifier name is what you're gonna use over there in the code. Then put it here in your code. And then when your client side calls this API, and then when your client side calls your server side, your, your server side, you need to collect that input like this. Your client is gonna send the origin, which is just your domain name and the validation URL, which is the URL that you need to send a post API request to to validate the merchant. And the body of that API request will look like this. And the authentication for that API request will look like this. Now you need to create a merchant identity certificate to create these two files for the authentication. So for that here in my project file, I'm just gonna create a new directory called it certs. And then I need to go back again to my uh, Apple developer portal, go to that merchant ID that I just created. Here on the merchant ID page, I need to create certificate. And then I need to upload a certificate signing request. To do that, go to your Keychain Access app on your Mac. Here, just click on Keychain Access, top left of the screen, and then Certificate Assistant, then request a certificate from a certificate authority. Here, enter your email, and then your email again. Then your common name could be your name or your name of your company. Then I'll select Safety Desk, and then let me specify key pair information. Hit Continue, and then just save that. And then here, make sure it's 2048 bits and RSA. Continue. Okay, now go back to your Apple Developer Portal here and upload that certificate signing request that you just created. Hit continue and then download the certificate that was just created. I'm gonna drag the certificate here in the search file, double click on it to add it to your computer. And then here, go to keys and try to find that certificate you just created. It should be under one of these keys. Just find a key that has a certificate under it that says Apple Pay Merchant Identity and this should match the same merchant ID that you just created. Okay, once you find it, just select these two. Hit export two items. I'll put it also here, I'll call it Merchant identity and make sure it's export sp12 save give it a password enter your computer's password okay now you have it here now make sure you're in the search directory and now you need to run these two commands to create the pm and the key file use this command for the pim file enter your password again the same one that you just used earlier and then this command for the key file and here you enter your password again okay now you have your pim and your key file back to the code now you have these two files to authenticate the request. Now you need to actually send the request. This is how we send the request, just a regular Axios request. The URL here, the body here, this is the body. This is the URL, validation URL, content type, application JSON, HTTPS agent, because we authenticate a certificate, and this is the agent. And then you just need to send that response to your client side if everything is okay. Oh, before we test it, we need to do one more step. We need to verify the domain. Go back to your Apple uh, Merchant ID. Here, click on this. Go all the way down here. Under Merchant Domains, add a domain to use for this Merchant ID. Just select Add Domain and then enter the domain name that you're going to use to host your Apple Pay button. Or if you develop mode, you can just enter your uh, lower environment domain name. Hit Save and then it's going to ask to drop a file at this location. Download this file. Now you're going to need to put this file in the same place where your index.js be. It's usually, it's typically under a file called public. So in the case of React.js, so in my case, this would be here because I'm using Firebase hosting and under Firebase hosting, there's uh, your, your, the, root the root directory for where you're deploying your app to Firebase. Here, under public, I'll be creating a directory. I'll call it dot well known. And inside this, I'm gonna place that file that I, that I just got from Apple. And let me remove this dash three to make sure it matches the path that's expected by Apple. After you've done that, you need to deploy your uh, app, Firebase hosting, or whatever hosting tool that you're using, just so that Apple can actually query that path and check if this file is there. So I'm gonna do, go ahead and do that. Okay, it got deployed. Now let's go to Apple and check. Just click here, verify, and it's verified. If for whatever reason it didn't get verified for you, you want to check if the file is actually there, you can actually just go to your browser, go to the domain, and then he just hit slash, and then type in well known. Tap in that path, .txt, and you should be able to see that file you just hosted like this. There was one more setup that we need to do before we, uh, we are actually able to do this. We need to go here, 
Apple payment processing certificate. We need to create a certificate. It's gonna ask, uh, it's gonna ask this, just hit continue. And then here it's gonna ask you for another certificate sign request, except this time you're gonna get it from your payment gateway. So for me, it's from Cybersource, I'm gonna log into the portal here, digital payment solution. I'm gonna select Apple Pay. And then here I'm gonna put the uh, merchant ID that I just created. There you go. And then generate the certificate signing request. Download that, go back here, and then upload that here. Hit continue, and then just download that file. And that should be all. Okay, let's go ahead and try it again. There you go, now it's working. So we've done all the certificates set up for this. Now let's go ahead and deploy this endpoint and use it in our client side. I'll show you how now. Endpoint deployed, let's validate if it's working. It's working. So let's go ahead and use this in our client side. Client side, here's the Apple Pay button component. Here's the invalidate merchant method call. It's gonna go here. I'm gonna send the validation URL and the origin that I get both from the event. Okay, it's gonna send it to this and then it's gonna confirm to Apple Pay that uh, this merchant is valid. And that's it for this step. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy my web app again to just test if that part is valid. And if it is, I'm gonna here print out that something that says merchant validated. Cool, and then here, I'm gonna print out the token once it's generated, but we're not gonna send it to the server just yet. We're just gonna do a return for demo purposes for now. Let's go ahead and deploy this and test it. Oh my bad, I forgot to include the Apple Pay button component in the card in the card base. So let's do that. Here it is. And this is gonna take the amount as an argument. And the amount is gonna be my card total as a string. Let's try again. Hit pay. And as you can see here in the console, it says merchant validated. So our merchant val valid merchant API call is working. So, and then when I confirm, I should see the token. Here's the Apple Pay token. There you go. But it's not gonna confirm the payment because I had I put return. So it's just gonna time out and then it's gonna fail. So now the next step is to work on that Cybersource API call that takes the token and performs the payment. Okay, now I'm just gonna grab this token and I'm gonna show you guys how the Cybersource a payment API works. This is the Cybersource payment API for Apple Pay. What's unique about it is that here you need to specify the payment solution. It has to be 001 for Apple Pay. Mount, billing information, and then here you need to paste your token. And there's a fixed descriptive value that you gotta put here and the encoding has to be always base64. Send this and you'll get the response like this. Well, it says authorized. That's how it's used. So now we're gonna implement this in our second API call and use it in our client side. So let's go ahead and do that. This is gonna get implemented here. Again, I'm gonna wrap everything in a try catch statement. I'll make sure my error is handled like this. I'm gonna generate a random order ID in my server using this method. This simple method just that just spits out a random string. Then I'm gonna to put together the API request body, just like you saw on Postman, getting the amount, currency, and the payment data from the client side. This is the Apple Pay pay big payment token that you saw earlier. Then I'm gonna to put together my my uh, the data that I need to create the headers for the request, my host, my path, my merchant ID and my key ID and my secret key. This is just uh, hard coded for the demo. Do not hard code your sensitive information like this. Use a secret manager. And then I'm gonna create my request headers like this using this create header method. This uses this li not npm library, cybersource auth. This is JavaScript library that I created that takes in this all this information and then creates a request header for you, making your life easier instead of having to calculate hashes and all that. And lastly, I can just send the request like this. And then if the response is good, I'm gonna send it back to the client side like this. Now let's go ahead and test this. Okay, send it. And I get the same response, which means it's working. Okay, the endpoint deployed and it's working. Now let's go ahead and use it on the client side and finish this up. So this, I'll remove the return here and actually pass the token to my server. Amount, currency, and payment data. And then here I'm gonna log the response from the server. And then here I'm gonna handle it. If my server returned authorized or succeeded, then I'm gonna indicate to Apple Pay that the payment's successful and that's gonna cause Apple Pay to show that payment done thingy on the Apple Pay prompt. And then after the payment is done, I'm gonna redirect to my result page and that's it. Now let's go ahead and deploy this and test it. Okay, it is deployed. Now let's try again, go back to our page, refresh, and now we should have an end-to-end -end payment experience. So hit Apple Pay, get the prompt, it says merchant validated. And then when you confirm with the payment ID, with the touch ID, it's gonna to send to my server. My server is gonna respond with authorized and then here it's gonna say done. And then it's gonna redirect to the result page. And that's it. This is how to implement Apple Pay for web using Cybersource Payment Gateway. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, if it was helpful, hit like, subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. In the comments. I'll leave the official documentations and 
uh, other information in the description box below. And if you want to get access to the full source code that was used in this video, you can find it on the Patreon link below. Uh, if you support the channel, you're going to get the source code for this video in exchange. Otherwise, you don't need it really. You can just follow this video to be able to implement it. You don't need the source code. However, supporting the channel is appreciated. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.